Shabbat Shalom. Wow, what a delight it is to be in the house of Hashem. If I sound like I'm out of breath, it's because I'm out of breath. I just ran over from our community center where we had an amazing Kabbalah Shabbat dinner, and there was some kind of a peanut butter pie that I had to stay for. People on the internet, I hope you understand. It was worth it. Uh, in any case... <laughs> It is Shabbat, and I'm glad you're all here. Listen, we've got a lot to be in prayer for uh, with everything going on in Israel right now. I think you all know that. Israel is in desperate need of our prayers, and we will be lifting up Israel for sure today on the Shabbat. Leading us in our service today is going to be Mark. He'll be taking us through. And so get ready to enjoy the beauty and delight that is Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Well, Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Shabbat Shalom to everyone here in person and virtually, joining us virtually. It is such a blessing to share in this day of rest with you, the Lord's day of rest with us. Well, let's go to the Lord and dedicate this the right way. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we humbly come before you on this Shabbat, this day of rest that you've given us as a gift, Lord God. You've commanded us to keep it holy as well, Lord. What a blessing it is for us. We ask that you continue to work in our hearts and we lift up any prayers and trust by faith that you will provide for each and every one of us according to your perfect will and plan. We welcome your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit in this day, the Shabbat. We dedicate this Shabbat to you and pray all this in your mighty name, Yeshua. Amen. And our psalmist will open us up with a, a song. Enjoy. Shabbat shalom. Let's stand together and just declare the Lord's goodness and our love for him.
special to worship on the Shabbat. Amen? Amen. Well, we'll now enter into the liturgy portion of our worship service, and you may be seated. Please join along wherever you see congregation. Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Leholam Vahen Bless the Lord who is blessed. Blessed be the Lord, who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, honored, and exalted. Be the name of the King of kings, the Holy One. Blessed be he who is the first and the last. And beside him there is no God. Extol him in the heavens. Lord is his name. Rejoice before his face. His name is lifted up beyond all blessing and praise. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Let the name of the Lord be blessed forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue with the Bishamru. And the Bishamru is from the Torah, where God gave Moses his commandment to keep the Sabbath day holy. And when we say this, we're also acknowledging he is our creator. Vishamu vene Israel, et a shahabat la so de tashabat, u da tamboi de holam, bene oven bene Israel, o he le olam, kisheshit yamim, asa harunai, et a shamayim vieta arts, u vayom hashvi shahabat, vahina fash. Amen. And English. The children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever that in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from his work and rested. Amen. I'll be, we'll begin with, with a responsive reading. I'll read the first paragraph and join me on the second. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who by your word brings on the evening twilight, and by your wisdom opens the gates of heaven. With understanding you order the cycles of time and vary the seasons, setting the stars in their courses in the sky according to your will. You create the day and night, causing the light to pass away before the darkness, and the darkness before the light. By your will the day turns into night, the Lord of heavenly hosts is your name. O ever-living God, rule over us forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, who brings on the evening twilight. With everlasting love, you have loved the house of Israel, teaching us your Torah and precepts, your statutes and judgments. Therefore, O Lord our God, when we lie down and when we get up, We'll meditate upon your instructions and rejoice forever in the words of your Torah and in its teachings, for they are our life and sustenance. We'll meditate upon them day and night. May your love never leave us. Blessed are you, O Lord, who loves your people, Israel. Amen. On the second Shabbat of every month, we at Congregation Beth Halal recite the Mourner's Kaddish. We do so in honor of loved ones who have either passed away during this year or in the anniversary of who is passing is marked by this month. If you have a loved one you, may, you, may, you are honoring this month, please rise as, re, as our cantor recites, uh, leads us in reciting the Mourner's Kaddish. I'll begin by leading in the Aramaic prayer first. 
and then followed by the English. Will everyone please join me where it says congregation? Yitgedal v'yitgedash me raba be'alma divra chirute v'yamlich machute v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chayedichol beit Yisrael ba'agala uvizman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehe shme raba mevarach le'olam u'olme almaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit baramam v'yit raman v'yit nase v'yit hadav v'yit alei v'yit alal shme de kudsha b'riachu. Leela minko birchata, vishirata, tushbechata, venechemata, da amiran bi alma ve imru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, vechayim alenu via kol Yisrael ve imru, amen. O se shalom bim ramav, huya se shalom alenu via kol Yisrael ve imru, amen. And now the English translation. Glorified and sanctified be his great name in the world which is created according to his will. May he cause the reign of his kingdom in your lifetime and in your days and in the life of all the house of Israel speedily, yes, soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and forever eternally. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, adored and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is high above, far above all blessings and hymns and praises and consolations which are spoken in the world and say, Amen. May there be great peace from heaven and life for us and for all Israel and say, Amen. May he who creates peace in the heavenly realms, may he make peace for us and for all Israel and let us all say, Amen. May their memory be for a blessing. And now will the rest of the congregation please rise? And when the congregation all rise, we will uh, recite the watchword of Israel, the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kavod, Malchuto, Le'olam vaheh. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. And we'll uh, recite the, uh, the continuation of the Shema, the Viahata, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'll read the Hebrew and just join me on the English. Via hafte et arana elehecha, the holavavka, ufhom nashaka, ufhom me odecha, the hayu habaim hale, a share and ochim safka, hayom, a livavecha, Vishinantam livenecha, with the bata bam beshiptecha, bebeteca, vlatica vaderk, ufshepeca, ufkumecha, ukshatam leo al yedecha, the hayu totofot, bain and necha, uktavtam al mezope techa, uvi sarecha. Amen. And the English. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your life, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as reminders on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Amen. I'll now read the summary of the Sabbath Amidah. And the Amidah is read while standing as the word Amidah means standing. And we are also facing east towards Jerusalem, where all synagogues everywhere are built facing the holy city. For in Ezekiel 43, it states that the, the Lord states he will break open those eastern skies over Jerusalem. We might want to make sure we're pointing in the right direction. Amen? Amen. Amen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Elohei Avateinu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Ha'el Hagido Hagibor Bahanoa, El Elyon, Keneshemaim Ve'aretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and revered God, the most high God, master of heaven and earth. 
He with his word was a shield to our forefathers, and by his voice will raise the dead, the holy God, like whom there is none, who gives rest to his people on his holy Sabbath day, because he delights in them to grant them rest. Before his presence we will serve with fear and awe. Daily and constantly we will thank him with the appropriate praises. He is the God to whom thanksgiving is due, the Lord of peace, who hallows the Sabbath and blesses the seventh day, and in holiness gives rest to a people filled with delights in remembrance of the creation. Our God and God of our fathers, accept our rest. Hallow us by your commandments and grant our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you truthfully and in your love and favor. O Lord, our God, let us inherit your holy Sabbath and may Israel, who sanctify your name, rest thereon. Blessed are you, O Lord, who hallows the Sabbath. Amen. As our worship team makes his way back up, turn to someone next to you. Wish them a Shabbat Shalom. Introduce yourself briefly there. How are you? Good, how are you? I don't think I've read what you're saying. It's a pleasure. It's cool, it's a pleasure. It's, a pleasure. it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, right? It's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I was telling you, I don't think I've, been, I don't think I've read why you guys have been up here. Yeah? And for those of you who are online, Shabbat Shalom to you. Hope you're enjoying your Shabbat. Sit, kick back, rest in the Lord. Amen. Well, if you've never participated in a Beth Hillel Shabbat service, either here in person or online, you're going to see things that we may do maybe a little bit differently than what you're comfortable with, what you're seeing. You're going to see people raising holy hands. You're going to see people clapping, shouting to the Lord. We want you to know this is all scriptural, all straight from your Bible, all Jewish as well. As we read in Psalm 47, clap your hands, all ye nations, shout to God with cries of joy. And in Psalm 63, King David said, I will praise you, Lord, as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. We invite everyone in person and online to do the same. Let's worship the Lord together.
to call forth our ushers to welcome some very special guests, our visitors. If this is your first time here at Congregation Beth Hillel, welcome. We have something for you, but we need to see where you are. We're all first-time guests and visitors. Please raise your hands up high and keep it on up. Our ushers are handing out a little packet, includes, including a blue visitor's card, some information about our synagogue, a name tag, and a pen. Please fill the card out now and drop it in the offering boxes a little bit later on during the offering portion of the service. And also please put your name on the name tag, stick it to your, to your shirt so we can greet you by name after the service. If this is your first time visiting us or seeing us online, a virtual welcome. If you have questions, if you want to know more about us, visit our website, bethhalel.org. We'd also love to hear from you. Send us an email at info at with your name and address so we can keep you in the loop of all the exciting things that are going on here at the congregation. But whether you're joining us here in person for the first time or virtually online, you are now part of our mishpacha, which means family. Welcome to the family. And the family is doing a, a few different things this month and upcoming months. The announcements will appear. Attention all men, 
The next men's breakfast will be on Sunday, April 21st at 10 a.m. For only $5, what a deal. We will enjoy a terrific breakfast and worship time. Please sign up uh, in the sign up portion of our website, BethHalal.org, so you can give our cooking staff a heads up as to giving a head count. It'll be, it's, it'll, it's always a blessing and it will be a blessing. Rabbi David Levitt will be teaching our adult scripture study this coming Tuesday. He's been a real blessing this month. Children's classes will be ongoing as usual. Preteens, mark your calendars for Saturday, April 20th, as well in, as we will enjoy a fun time of playing outdoor mini golf at The Fringe in Roswell. We'll leave right after the service and return to CBH by 3.30. Please sign up online. All children, grades pre-K through eighth grade, are welcome to join us in the MJCC for a great time of fun and learning as we celebrate Pesach Passover with chocolate. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Pre-K through eighth grade, so all of us adults, oh, oh, boo. Don't miss our annual chocolate Seder on Wednesday, April 24th at 6.30 p.m. It is a time. It is also at the same time, or uh, starting around the same time as the resurrection service that day. The cost is five dollars per child. In order to attend, you must register online under the sign up tag on, tab on BethHalel.org. Our students need your help with this year's Ruach Hatan, the fundraiser that is a blessing to everyone. The young people will be working hard at Beth Hillel and at the homes of some of our widows for 18 straight hours, 18 hours. And we are asking you to sponsor them. Sign up to be a sponsor at the table in the foyer or by emailing the office at info at Beth Hillel.org. In order to uh, thank you for your support and your generosity for our students. It allows them to do such things that the Lord blesses them through, like events and conferences. I'm also... Um, uh, a product of, of this. So it is a blessing. It's, it's a testimony, actually, a testimony. We are overcomers by the words of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Let's celebrate the resurrection of the Messiah. Our resurrection service will be on Wednesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. It is a beautiful and special service. Come and be uplifted as Yeshua has risen. Amen. Amen. Rabbi. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, I really want to encourage you. See them at the back table, the young people, teens and college age. They've got like almost 20 people who are serving 18 hours all over North Georgia and at the homes of widows and here at the congregation to help and to bless. And we want to bless them. But with so many, we really want to bless them big. So we've got like almost 20. It's like 17, 18 of our young people who are participating in this. So please stop by the table on your way out, make a pledge for the Ruachathon or, uh, or even make a, make a gift right then and there. Uh, and also they have some Passover items that the young people are selling, which will help bless them as well and will help bless you uh, during Passover season. And so we, uh, we pulled some things out there and, and you can uh, take a look at those at the table, some amazing stuff. I want to encourage you, age 25 to 40, all 25 to 40 year olds, join Kesher this Sunday for bowling. Going to be meeting at 7.30 p.m. at Bolero Roswell. The cost $16 a person, includes the shoe rental. Listen, so if you're age 25 to 40, doesn't matter if you're married, single, you don't have to be a member here, age 25 to 40, come to the Bolero in, in Roswell Sunday night and, uh, and join the Kesher group. Uh, they're going to have a lot of fun. No bowling experience required. <laughs> Listen, our Jewish people are not known for our athletic prowess. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they'll be using the baby bumpers on the lanes or not, but uh, I'm sure some of them can actually bowl. But most can't, so please come. You don't need to worry about uh, how you might appear. You'll appear very like you fit in, actually. <laughs> Age 25 to 40, come. Okay, listen, that's, that's all the announcements that are on the screen, both online and here, so you're not missing one. I have a late-breaking announcement. I go in, wanted to go ahead and start 
now because we got all the details finalized just in time for service, and I want to make you aware. And, uh, and I think this is going to be pretty uh, impactful. Congregation Beth Hillel invites you to attend a very special commemoration of Yom HaShoah on Saturday, May 4th. Mark your calendars now. Saturday, May 4th, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to be a time to remember and honor the victims of the Holocaust. This year, we're very blessed to have a special opportunity to hear directly from a Holocaust survivor. Um, there are not a lot of Holocaust survivors still around, to be honest with you, and more of them pass uh, into eternity each day. And this particular Holocaust survivor was born in Warsaw, Poland, and actually as an infant, uh, he was thrown over the barbed wire fence of the Vilna Ghetto uh, into the waiting arms of the daughter of a man that worked for his father. And risking their own lives, they hid uh, George for the remainder of the war. And he pre uh, presents his remarkable story of resilience. And, uh, and the presentation is, is geared towards students fifth grade and older. Students in fourth grade and younger will attend a separate class uh, that we'll also offer. It's a free event. Uh, and, but, to, but to hear from a survivor um, is very meaningful. Uh, and obviously, his whole life was changed uh, because of the Shoah. Uh, in addition, Beth Hillel is going to be hosting a Holocaust Museum traveling exhibit called Never Forget, an introduction to the Holocaust. And this exhibit tells the often complicated and difficult story of the Holocaust, appropriate for audiences fifth grade and older and features the story of one Holocaust victim, Norbert Friedman, who survived 11 camps and eventually immigrated to the US after the Holocaust. The exhibit, we're gonna put it on display downstairs in this building, May 3rd and 4th that weekend. So please mark your calendar and uh, I'm planned to attend. This is something, gosh, I, I hope you've seen what's been going on in the world with all the anti-Semitism. Uh, we have to remember, friends, we have to remember what happened in the, in the Shoah. As difficult and as tragic as it was, this is why we need to remember, because uh, the, the evil that was around back then is still around. And, uh, and so we must remember, and certainly anybody in this congregation, I really expect you to be here on Yom HaShoah. Uh, so it's pretty remarkable this year what we're going to have. So. Uh, we're honored to make that announcement, and it's not on the, uh, the, the screens, but nonetheless, we wanted to tell you so you could prepare. It's May 4th, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. Shabbat shalom. Well, thank you, Rabbi. It is important that we continue to do as Scripture says in Proverbs 3 and 9, and honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Let us be generous to God as he's been so generous and good to us. Uh, visitors, we do not solicit your tithes here, but if you'd like to bless us with a love offering, we pray you're blessed in return for your generosity. For those of you who are watching online, you can have your bank send a check through your online bill pay, or you can mail your check to Bethel at 950 Pine Grove Road, Roswell, Georgia 30075. Finally, for those of you who are online, you can click the link in the description box to give you a credit card or hold your uh, smartphone up to scan the QR code as well. In just a moment, our musicians will share a song to give you time to click the links and also for those of you who are here to drop your uh, offerings and tithes into the offering boxes on either side of the stage. And visitors, this is also that time to drop those cards in the, in the offering boxes as well. But let's go to the Lord and dedicate these tithes and offerings, the gifts and the giver to him. But also, as we read in 1 Chronicles 29 and 14, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you all what only comes from your hand, Lord. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Avinu Malkanu, our Father, our King, we thank you for the Shabbat and the rest that it that you bring in it, Lord. We thank you for all the good things that you've given us, Lord. All good things come from your hand. Lord, let us be good stewards. Lord, bless the gift, bless the giver, and let all that is being used to further your kingdom and for your glory. We pray all this in your mighty name, Yeshua. Amen.
Well, thank you, Psalmist. We will now enter into the Torah portion of our worship service. I would like to call up our ark openers. Please rise when the ark behind me is open. And out of respect for the Torah, please remain in the sanctuary while the ark is open. I would also like to call up our cantor, Baruch Ben Zvi. And it came to pass, when, and whenever the ark went forward, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to read in English what Mark just read for us in Hebrew. If this is your first Torah service, you're going to hear blessings that are thousands of years old. Some Yeshua heard and probably sang in his synagogue over 2,000 years ago. And if you know these melodies, please join along with me. If not, close your eyes and enjoy the timelessness and sweetness of this part of your Jewish roots. Vai he ben so aharon, vai yomer moshe, kuma adonai, ve afusu oyevecha, ve anusu misanecha, mi panecha, ki mitzion te tsehe tora. Ki mitzion tetzeh Torah Urvar Adonai Merushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Leamo Yisrael, big to Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Unique is our God, great is our Lord, holy and revered is his name. Exalt the Lord with me, and let's extol his name together with the Shema. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonainu, Kadosh Veinora Shemo, Gadlul Adonai who can be compared to you, O Lord, among the gods? Who can be compared to you? Glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders. From the song of praise, Moses and the children of Israel sang to the Lord from Exodus 15:11, Mi Chamocha. Mi Chamocha, Madonai. Mi kamocha ne dava kodesh no ra te hilod o se fele no ra te hilod o se fele yahamod morcha lazarus. Ben Marushama La Torah. He who blessed our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may bless Mordechai Lazarus, Ben Marushama, who has come up to honor God in the Torah. May the Holy One bless him yes. and his family and send blessing and prosperity on all the works of his hands. And let us all say, Amen. Thank you, Baruch. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Va'en, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Va'en, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamin, Minan Tan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Adonai Notein HaTocha, Amen. Bless the Lord who is blessed. 
Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Bless the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and gave to us the Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Today is the fifth day of Nisan in the year 5784, and the parsha is Tazarah. She bears seed. The Torah reading I'll be reading from can be found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verses 41 to 46. If he has lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead, he is clean. But if he has a reddish white sore on his bald head or forehead, it is a defiling disease breaking out on his head or forehead. The priest is to examine him, and if the swollen sore on his head or forehead is, is reddish with white, like a defiling skin disease, the man is diseased and is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him unclean before, because of the sore on his head. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their face, and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. Amen. The half Torah reading can be found in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 5, verses 10 through 15. The prophet Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Pafar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, my, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored, and he became clean like the diet of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. Amen. The Brick Hadashah, or New Covenant reading, can be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. When Yeshua came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Yeshua reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately, he was cleansed from his leprosy. Then Yeshua said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests and offer the gift of Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Let us continue to bless God for giving us the New Covenant Scriptures. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher nantan lanu devar emet V'chaye olam nata betocheinu Baruch atah Adonai No teim brit chadashah Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gave us the word of truth and planted among us life eternal. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Now please join with me with congregation response. This is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel. It is in accord with the Lord's command by the hand of Moses. 
a tree of life it is for those who take hold of it, and blessed are the ones who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Long life is in its right hand, in its left are riches and honor. The Lord was pleased for the sake of his righteousness to render the Torah great and glorious. Amen. And now please join with me with the beautiful Eitz Chaim and Hashivenu. Eitz Chaim hi l'machazikim ba v'tom cheha meusha d'racheha d'achena uam V'chonativotecha shalom Ashivenu Adonai Elecha v'hena shuva Chadesh Chadesh Yameinu Chadesh Yameinu Kedem Please join with me with these words. Turn us, Lord, to you and let us return. Renew, renew our days. Renew our days, Abba, as of old. Amen. And when the ark rested, Moses would say, Return, O Lord, to the myriads of Israel's families. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Clothe your priests with righteousness. May those who have experienced your faithful love shout for joy. Baruch Hashem. For the sake of your servant David, do not delay the return of your Messiah. I give you good instruction. Do not forsake my Torah. And now let us bless God for giving us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Baruch Atarnai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Hadavar Hachai Bamashiach Yeshua Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who's given us the living word and Messiah Yeshua. And let us say, Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> what a blessing, amen? amen? In just a moment, we're going to be dismissing our four, five, and six year olds to Tora Tots and our seven, eight, nine to Club Maccabee. We'll ask the Lord to bless these children. They're dear to us. Of course, we have the nursery age zero to three downstairs, so age zero to nine, we'll dismiss in just a minute. But first, we want to ask the Lord to bless our kids and also right now. We want to lift up the nation of Israel. If you've been following everything going on, it's interesting because this service, of course, is streamed. And uh, who knows, uh, we have lots of people watch throughout the week. And it's a lot of people by the end of the week who've watched the stream or listened to the podcast. And, and, uh, and so it may be that by the time you're watching this, that what I'm about to pray for has already gone down. Uh, and if so, I know that uh, you need to keep praying that's for sure. But we need to lift up the nation of Israel. Uh, the nation of Iran has threatened um, in a very credible way, according to the U.S. government, to, uh, to do some kind of an attack of, of some sort on Israel proper. So we'll see if that happens uh, or if they don't. But uh, if they do, of course, uh, Israel will surely respond uh, with significance. And so it's a, it's a real dicey moment. Uh, one United States senator said it's the most kind of powder kegged it's been since the Yom Kippur War, which was 1973. So we really need to be uh, in prayer for, for Israel right now, uh, for protection uh, of her people and, and, and our, our Messianic Jewish body, of course, in Israel and Israel's leaders, the IDF and such. And we, uh, I'll tell you, is that make no bones about it. We're, we, we support uh, uh, Israel, not to say she always makes perfect decisions. She doesn't. 
there are things that we disagree with that, about her policies and such. But but yet at the same time, it's it's not about the the, the politics of it. Uh, uh, it's it's a homeland uh, for our people. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Avinu Shabbat Shalom, Father in heaven, humbly we come before you. We ask your touch on Eretz Yisrael, Lord. Please uh, touch that land, cover it under your wings, Lord. And uh, and God, if. Uh, if something is, is imminent, Lord, I pray for a confusion of the plans of the enemy. Uh, and I pray for supernatural protection. You're covering over Israel, over her people. Uh, and, uh, and that you will uh, do miraculous things to protect and defend her, Lord. Uh, it reminds me what the cantor said a little bit earlier. Uh, Lord, do it as in days of old. We read in scripture how you would uh, defend your, your land. Uh, and so humbly, we, this is what we pray for even now, God. Give Israel's leaders, political leaders, wisdom as to what to do. Their military leaders, wisdom as to what to do. I pray for the leaders of our country here in the United States um, that we would support uh, Israel. Uh, and, uh, and God, I'm thankful for some of the things that have been coming out recently regarding that uh, in, in respect to Iran. Uh, but Lord, I pray that our country does support Israel. Uh, Lord, be with her, God, and, and guide her, Lord. Yes, correcting her when she is wrong and makes mistakes. Uh, but at the same time, Lord, loving her as, as I know that you do. Uh, and, and so, Lord, this is our humble request. God, I ask your touch on our children, on our Yeladim. Please be with them. Thank you so much for them. God, bless our kids, God, who you love and have trusted to us for a season. And uh, it's top of mind for me. I thank you, God, for this. B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Okay, ages four to nine, you're dismissed at this time. And uh, zero to three also, just all downstairs. You're going to have some fun and enjoy yourselves. Yeah, exactly. Entering the next phase of our worship service, let the Lord bless you.
our Father and our King of glory. Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can enter into the Holy of Holies, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, by Yeshua's blood. Thank you, Lord, that you've, we have access, that you've come down to us, Lord God. Thank you that each and every one of us who has you, our temple, our body, the temple of the living God, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us your word. Lord, let everyone's doors of their hearts be open, flung open to hear what you have for them today through our rabbi. Let your word flow clearly through him and bless all in the hearing of your word. Bless rabbi's family and all the families here and online. We pray all this in your mighty name, Yeshua. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Thank you so much, worship team. Man, that was that incredible or what? Wow. And Mr. Chris, I just noticed I've got the red light on my microphone. So if you want to have a couple batteries, just put them up here on stage and I'll uh, replace them when I feel the power leave me. It's a little new covenant reference there. <laughs> Some of you get the joke there. It's a <laughs> Bible scholars know, know that joke. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> never used that one before. Let's go to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I want to look at something that's kind of intimate in Scripture. Friends, did you know that God, did you know that God really cares for Israel? Did you know that? <laughs> Like deeply, 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 deeply. <sighs> Here in Luke chapter 19, Yeshua was entering Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. Wow, there's no place in the world like the Mount of Olives. It is just absolutely breathtaking. And uh, wow, you can feel the history and you can feel the, the deep spiritual warfare that's going on, quite honestly, if you're, if you're there. I, I'm anticipating going next spring, spring of next year. So if any of you want to start saving your shackles, you might, okay, somebody's ready. Okay, good. So Yeshua is entering Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives uh, down into the valley there from the mountain. Remember, of course, that he would eventually be going to the execution stake, yet at this time, even though it wasn't that far into the future, yet all the people, man, they were just celebrating. They were all around him. They were, they were cheering him. They were praising God for all the miracles that they had seen Yeshua do. And they were just going nuts for Yeshua, right? The disciples, it says, were rejoicing. That's the scene, Yeshua coming into Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, everybody just celebrating like crazy, rejoicing, but in the midst of this dramatic celebration, Yeshua's reaction was something dramatically different. Yeshua's reaction was, was a, a completely different tone. It was, it was completely disconnected to everything that was surrounding him. What was... What was, something else was on Yeshua's mind in that moment of great fanfare and celebration about him. Why? Because they knew, he knew what would be happening soon. He, was, he would be going to execute, but he also knew what would be happening to Jerusalem and all those, all those people, many of those people. And so verse 41, Luke 19, 41, it says this, as he drew near and saw Jerusalem, what did Yeshua do? It says he wept over her. Just kind of pause for just a minute. Saying, if only you would recognize this day, the things that lead to shalom, but now they're hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will surround you with barricades and hem you in on all sides, and they will smash you to the ground, you and your children within you. And they won't leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Wow. That's intense, friends. In the midst of the, of the hoopla and in the midst of rejoicing and celebration, in the midst of that, Yeshua is lamenting. Yeshua is weeping, weeping over Jerusalem. He wept for them. 
He knew that they would be suffering in part due to, in part due to their rejection of God. His, his heart hurt for them because he could see everything that was going on, but he knew the reality of, of what was going to take place. And, and it, was, it was almost like, uh, it almost to me is the sense of Yeshua looking at them and just like, oh, I want for you to think about that for just a minute. And yes, we see in this part of God's heart and love for Israel and the Jewish people, no question. But also, friends, we see in this simply God's heart. People think of God as this disconnected puppeteer that thinks of humanity as peons. But that's not the truth at all. God is not disconnected. He doesn't think of us as just peons that are, are there for his just useless not in any way. This is not the truth. You get a sense of it by seeing Yeshua's reaction as he thinks about the people there in Jerusalem. It's interesting because when we think of the gamut of human emotions, each one of them conveys a, a different connotation. Each of our emotions uh, elicit a different meaning, if you will. But in those moments, and I want you to think about this just in the, in the realm of, of human emotion, in those moments of greatest meaning in your life, in the life of other people, in those moments, those, those few moments in life that we have that are of the greatest meaning, oftentimes these emotions are accompanied by weeping. Oftentimes, think about it for just a minute. When someone hears about losing someone they love, tears. Oftentimes, when someone experiences the greatest joy imaginable, tears. It's interesting, isn't it? Weeping is almost the ultimate expression of the depth of emotion. So when Yeshua says that he weeps for Jerusalem and her people, it speaks volumes of his love and devotion to them. It really reveals the heart of God that he would feel so viscerally affected as he's thinking about them and their future. And <laughs> this has connotations to the current conflict as well that's going on, no question. For sure, God weeps for all who are innocent, who lose their lives due to the depravity of man. That includes those in Gaza. But unquestionably, God has a special place in his heart for Israel and his chosen people. And listen to this. God knows that it is because of his selection of this people that they are the most persecuted people in the history of the world. Think about that for just a minute. Oh, I'm not just saying it is a fact, as a fact it is, but I'm, I'm giving you a perspective that God gets it. He understands 
that because of his selection of this people, it was because of his selection of them that they are the most persecuted people in the history of the world. Friends, best know, best know that this evokes sadness in our heavenly father when they suffer as they did on October 7th and subsequently. Best know he feels that. He is well aware of the ramifications of his decisions. And friends, we should weep for them as well. Romans chapter 12, please. Romans 12. I'm going to seek to flip out these batteries now. I'd like to think that was smooth, but I know it wasn't. (laughs) Romans chapter 12, please. Verse 15 says this, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Friends, we have to have an empathy for others. If you're a follower of God, we can't be some kind of a glacier (laughs) that's ice cold. We can't be that way. Not if you're really trying to follow the the God that loves people. You can't be a, a hard wall that, that never can be penetrated and that never can be shaken at all or vulnerable at any point. There's a God-given nature that we should embrace. God-given. It's right here in Scripture. There's a God-given nature that we should embrace where we rejoice with those who rejoice. And I'll pause there because... Friends, we should rejoice when other people rejoice. So please don't be one of these people (laughs) that somebody says to you, oh, I just got a big raise. I'm so excited. And you go, oh, that's really nice. Really nice. Yeah, been a long time since I've had a raise. Thanks for that information. Yay, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, great, you got a new car. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, 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 my transmission's going out. Yeah, that's nice. Congratulations, I'm so excited. I can't even hold it back. (laughs) No, don't do that. (laughs) Rejoice with those who rejoice. But also, weep with those who weep. Y'all, as mom and em, as believers, there's got to be something with, within us if we, if we serve and worship the one true God that cares for people, right? That has a love for people, that, that, that hurts when other people are hurting, that, that weeps when they weep. There's a, there's a pureness and there's a humility in weeping that's deep and it's hard to understand completely even. <laughs> when I say there's a, there's a pureness and a humility, it's, it's, it's humbling sometimes to weep. That's why people joke around with the, with the expression, I'm an ugly crier, right? <laughs> You've heard that expression before, right? You know, they, they don't frequently show supermodels uh, weeping, you know? <laughs> it's not the best look, right? Everybody, you know, and it's, uh, and, and, and both genders, uh, as a side note, there are two, um, <laughs> both genders have issues, <laughs> have issues with weeping sometimes, uh, is, that, is that guys sometimes have issues weeping because of the fact that 
you know, it's not seen by some as a very manly thing to do. You know, I never cry. You know, I get a guy who comes to me and says, I, I never, ever cry. I say, well, you know, maybe you need some prayer then. Yeah. Uh, And then sometimes women don't want to cry, and they're feeling, oh, <laughs> my, my eye makeup's going to run all over the place. <laughs> God bless them. No. There's a humility in weeping, a pureness in it. It's a vulnerability, and it's something that connects us to others. Friends, I'll say, be willing to cry. It's not a weakness. Now, I'm not saying that you should be, you know, it's like, uh, you know, oh, they've, they've closed the drive through at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, it's Sunday, I can't get my Chick-fil-A seven. <laughs> You know, listen, I, 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 you understand what I'm saying here, okay? <laughs> oh, my kids have almost cried about that at Chick-fil-A. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, please. Ecclesiastes 7. There's something especially genuine about shedding tears. When we mourn, there's a depth of understanding and it's not trite, y'all. It is not trite. It's not foolish. When you cry, right? When somebody cries, there's a pureness, right? Think about when you're around somebody who's just really crying. There's a, a vulnerability. There's a realness. There's no pretense. There's a genuineness. Uh, somebody's being very real when they cry. It's interesting. Uh, and oftentimes... You see crying when there's mourning, when somebody passes. And it's so interesting to me, and it's pretty deep, what the wisest man ever to live says. And it's a little counterintuitive. I'm <laughs> completely straight with you when I say this, is that it's a little, it's a little baffling to me. And I only, think I, I only think I partially understand it. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to weigh into it, and that really relates to this word. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 Verse 2, the wise man said, Better to go to a house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Since that is the end of all mankind, and the living should take it to heart. Grief is better than laughter. For though the face is sad, the heart may be glad. The heart of the wise is in a house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in a house of pleasure. Yay, yay, man, that is heavy. Ooh, that is weighty. That's one of those passages, Goldberg, that can make me like think for hours on it, you know, trying to fully grasp that and to try to internalize it. We see in this that at the end of the day, God is looking for us to be genuine. I, just in preparation for the, for the message, I went in my computer. On my computer, I've got folders for lots of things, of course, and, and I have one folder that's called, you would expect this of a rabbi, right? It's called funerals. <laughs> and this kind of makes sense. It's like one of the things that I... Am, am honored and, and called to do periodically. And, I've, and, and I, I counted them. I've done over 70 funerals. That's a lot. And guess what? At funerals, there, there are a lot of tears. There are a lot of raw, sincere feelings. And the truth is, thinking about it to what Ecclesiastes says, Good or bad feelings in the moment, because there can be both when we remember somebody's past. Good or bad feelings in the moment, death confronts us with the eventuality of our own existence here on earth. 
And truly, as Melech Shlomo said, if we simply seek pleasure all the time, we will live a very shallow life. It's a shallow existence, just constantly seeking pleasure to pleasure to pleasure. Sometimes the tears are helpful to put things into perspective and to prioritize things in our lives better. See, when we're with people who are mourning, we see the truth of the eventuality of our lives and the temporal nature of our lives here on this earth. And it may help us, and I think this is what King Solomon is getting at here in Ecclesiastes, is it helps us put things in perspective a little bit. You know, if you're out here doing this fun, wild thing, this fun, nothing against doing things that are enjoyable or pleasurable, but if that's our sole focus, then we lose perspective on what life is. And the fact that this life is just kind of like a preparation for eternity. This life is not the end, but what we do in this life is of great importance. Sometimes tears are helpful to put these things into perspective. And, and when you go into a house of mourning, when you go into a house of mourning, you do what we read about back in Romans chapter 12. We weep with those who weep. It's a visceral and a beautiful thing to do. John chapter 11. Very interesting story. One of Yeshua's good friends' name was Lazarus. I used to enjoy an old song by a music artist named Carmen of blessed memory. He used to have a great song, Lazarus Come Forth. Some of you may remember that. Nobody, absolutely no one. No, oh, you remember that. Okay, Brenda, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Okay, good, George. Yep. What a great song. You need to look that one up. If you're watching online, don't do it in the middle of my message, please. <laughs> Have some respect here. I can see you. <laughs> the people listening via podcast are even more freaked out. What's, 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 uh, there's no camera. Okay. <laughs> One of Yeshua's good friends was a guy named Lazarus. Lazarus was the brother of Miriam and Martha. And scriptures make it clear how Yeshua felt about Lazarus. Something I want to share with you. Y'all, this is going to change how you think about Yeshua, how you think about God. Get ready. John chapter 11, verse 3. So the sister sent word to Yeshua saying, Master, the one you love is sick. Meaning Lazarus is sick. When Yeshua heard this, he said, This sickness will not end in death. It is for God's glory so that Ben Elohim, the Son of God, may be glorified through it. Now Yeshua loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Okay, so it's clear here, friends, that Yeshua loved Lazarus. Yeshua loved this guy. He was, he was a friend. He was a brother. He was a bud. He was somebody who he cared about. And, and he also loved Lazarus' sisters, Miriam and, and Martha. You've heard about them in the scriptures. We read about them in other places. But, but friends, by the time Yeshua made it to their town, guess what? Lazarus was already dead. He was already dead. You know, people didn't just uh, say, oh, let me hop in my car and, and head on over there. Be there in 20 minutes. No, friends. You have to travel mountains. It takes time. And, and he was in the middle of doing some stuff where he was, and he didn't leave right away. And so finally, he's coming to the area where, where Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who was already in the grave at that point, were. Verse 20, John eleven twenty. 20. When Martha heard that Yeshua was coming, she went out to meet him, but Miriam sat in the house. Martha said to Yeshua, Master, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Oh, man. But I know even now that whatever you ask, may ask of God, he will give you. Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. <laughs> Man, cue, cue the Spielberg music at that point. You know, it's like, whoa, what did he just say? Come on, somebody, that's a good one. Woo, man, I don't know what's going on with that, Nelson. Mm -mm. 
That, that's a powerful moment for sure. There's no question. That's like, whoa, your brother will rise again. It's so funny. Her reaction was like, yeah, I know in the final resurrection when we all go to heaven, he'll be coming along. It's like she didn't get what he was saying. Yeshua had arrived on the scene, but friends, you could hear her pain. She came to Yeshua, and, and you know how she must have been. She said, if you'd only been here, if you'd only been here, Yeshua, if you'd, if you'd only been here. You can feel her pain. Can't you feel her pain? This is her brother. Verse 32, let's skip down. John eleven thirty-two. So when Miriam came to where Yeshua was, she saw him and fell at his feet. This is the other sister. She fell at his feet saying to him, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Yeshua saw her weeping and the Judeans who came with her weeping, he was deeply troubled in his spirit and himself agitated. Where have you laid him? He asked, come and see, master. They tell him. Yeshua wept. Yeshua wept. So the Judeans said, oh, see how he loved him. Okay, friends, we know the rest of the story. We know the rest of the story. Yeshua says, Lazarus, come forth. And after four days, dead, he comes out of that tomb. It's a great miracle, and it's a sign of the Messiah, by the way, an, uh, an ancient Jewish sign of the Messiah, for sure. But that's not what I want to focus on today. <laughs> How about that? When I don't want to focus on the miracle of resurrection, I want to focus on Yeshua's reaction. As a child, I was taught, <laughs> when you're learning about things as a child, I was, I was taught about the shortest verse in the whole Bible. And it's John eleven thirty five. 35. It's the shortest verse in the entire Bible. It's two words, Yeshua wept. But I'm going to tell you something, y'all. What a power-packed verse. It says that Yeshua was deeply troubled in spirit. And he wept when he saw her and others weeping. Friends, it's crucial to understand in the story why Yeshua wept. And the people didn't get it right. Not completely at least. Very, very importantly, to understand, we have to look back at what we read earlier in verse 23, and even in verse 11, for that matter. In both places, Yeshua makes it clear that he is aware, he's already aware that Lazarus is dead. This is not news to him. This is not like, oh, <gasps> Lazarus is dead and it's the and and his reaction is the reaction to Lazarus's death that's not it he knew days before about Lazarus he's known for days that Lazarus was dead but here's the interesting thing because he also made it clear that he was planning on resurrecting him from the dead Hear me, back in, earlier, when he was in the other city, he told his disciples, I've got, to, I've got to bring him up from his sleep. And the disciples thought that meant that he was sleeping. And they said, well, he's sleeping. Maybe he needs some rest, Yeshua. I mean, he's trying to get well. <laughs> that's, that's not what <laughs> they totally... <whoosh. laughs> he missed. What's the point here? Yeshua already knew days ahead of time that he was dead and that he was going to resurrect him. Yeshua already knew this ahead of time. You can see it in the context. In other words, he knew that, you, that Lazarus was not going to stay dead. So this gives us important context as to why Yeshua wept. He was not weeping for the death of Lazarus. He was weeping 
because he, he saw the pain and the mourning of Martha and Miriam, two of his dear friends and disciples, and he was empathizing with them. And the fact that they hurt so much tore him up. He knew what was happening with Lazarus. Friends, I want to tell you something. In this moment, you get an insight into how God in heaven feels about you. Sometimes I think we feel disconnected to God. And sometimes we feel especially disconnected when we're hurting. We sometimes feel like God doesn't care or that he can't really relate. But we see in this passage that God relates on the deepest and most emotional level you could possibly reach. His care is beyond what we can even imagine. Even though he knew he was about to resurrect Lazarus, he was so moved by the pain of Mary and Martha that he too felt pain, intense pain, pain strong enough to cause him to weep. It doesn't, doesn't say that he shed a tear. It said he wept. It's so interesting because as sad as this moment was, in many ways, it is one of the most encouraging passages in all of scripture to us all. It is one of the most encouraging scriptures you'll ever read. Why? Because my friends, it tells us that he gets it. He gets it. He really, really gets it. He gets us. Because even though God sees the big picture, he also understands the emotion we feel only seeing the small picture. I want to say that again. Even though God sees the big picture, he understands the emotion that we feel only seeing the small picture. Listen, friends, we all have difficult things that happen to us. Loved ones die. Relationships break down. We go through sickness. We struggle financially at times. These things can happen. And yes, God knows well the end of the story. If we are faithful to him, we will be with him in eternity where there are no tears, there is no pain, there is great joy. So God knows the big picture. He knows the end of the story, but that does not mean that God does not care about your tears now. He does. I don't have to speculate about that. It's right there in the text we just read. He cares about you and what you're going through at this very minute, even though he knows what the future's gonna bring and he knows the good things down the road, but he feels the pain that you have right now. He cares greatly. In fact, he cares so much that he might even weep with you. Friends, that in and of itself should encourage you. <laughs> that in and of itself should give you hope. That in and of itself should be uplifting to you to know that God cares for you that much about where you're at right now. 
And he's not like, he wasn't, gosh, and you know, in that moment, uh, he could have been Mary, Martha, you don't get it. I'm about to resurrect him. Why are you crying? You know, you, you, know, you pitiful thing. <sighs> no, he wept. He wept with them. At the same time, we do have to always know and remember that there is an end to the story. In this way, we need not weep forever. Let's conclude with John chapter 16, John 16. Here at this point, Yeshua was telling his Talmudim about his second coming. And he told them this in John chapter 16, verse 19. Yeshua knew that they wanted to question him. So he said to them, are you asking about this that I said a little while and you will no longer see me? And again, in a little while, you will see me. In other words, when I go up and then I'm going to return one day. Verse 20, amen, amen, I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will celebrate. You will be filled with sorrow, but your sorrow will turn to joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. Oh man, golly. So recognize, my friends, that your God loves you. He loves you so much that he weeps with you. Your tears are important and held in his hands. Your tears are not in vain. At the same time, remember what Yeshua says in John chapter 16. And for that matter, what is written back in Psalm 30. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Let the God who loves you and empathizes with you encourage you today. The title of my message is Weep. Let's bow our heads. I want to ask if there's anybody here who's never said a prayer to receive Yeshua as your Messiah. If that's you and you've never given your life to God, but you'd like to, wherever you are, lift your hand and we'll pray together. If you've never said yes and committed your life to God, but you want to today, if that's you, just lift your hand. Maybe you're watching online or listening on the podcast and that's you. You've never committed your life to God. Repeat this simple prayer after me. me. Say, dear God, I humble myself before you. I accept Yeshua into my heart. I believe he's risen again, sitting at your right hand. Please forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry. I'll live the rest of my days for you. Thank you, God. Wow, if you said that prayer, there's a transformation that happens. It's so interesting, friends, because what we do here at Bethel is not about religion. Honest to goodness, it's not. It's about a relationship. And I think this message, in more ways than most, reveals the nature of that relationship we have with our Creator. And the fact that people think of God as just so distant, but He's not. Oh, he's with you, and he cares about the little things. He cares about what you care about. He hurts when you hurt. And yes, he weeps when you weep. Wow. That is, 
That's a different kind of God than is portrayed out there. So intimate, so caring, so loving. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you're that kind of a God to us, Lord. And sometimes I know we feel, we feel like you're distant, but that's only our own perception. Nothing could be further from the truth, Lord. Let us feel your love more than ever. Let us know it deep into our hearts so that when we're going through it, Lord, we're encouraged. Why? Because we know that you're with us and that you care about what we're going through and what we feel. That means a lot, even when other people may not understand or even know. Thank you, God, for this. We love you. We bless you. And we ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi, for bringing us the Lord's word. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to call up our cantor for the ironic benediction. Please rise. In Numbers 622, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you ought to bless the people of Israel. In this way, that to put my name on the people of Israel, so that I will bless them. Please bow your heads to prepare to receive Adonai's blessing, the ironic benediction. Semlecha Shalom. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach, Sa Shalom. Name of Messiah Yeshua, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Well, thank you to each and every one of you who's joined us here in person or online. We're going to end our service with a closing song. But afterwards, for those of you who would like to get some prayer, we're going to have some leadership out in front to pray for each and every one of you who'd like to have some prayer. Please reserve the first two rows for those receiving prayer. And if you're watching online and you have a prayer request, click the link in the description box below and send us your prayer request. We will most assuredly pray for you as well. Also, after the service, we are welcome to stay and schmooze with one another. The library is open downstairs, and please check out our table outside. Give to the to the uh, the, the children or all well, the teenagers. Um, we hope that the remainder of your Shabbat is full of the rest and the joy of the Lord. Go out with joy. Invite a friend. Invite a Jewish friend. It's as easy as sharing a link. Shabbat shalom, y'all. Shabbat shalom. Two, Shabbat shalom. three.